this week's Arcade Attack Retro Gaming Fact. Sega previously existed as Service Games of Japan, established in 1952 to distribute slot machines for the US-based service games because of slot machines being outlawed in the United States. Though it no longer produces consoles, Sega is still the most prolific arcade manufacturer in the world, with over 500 games in over 70 franchises on more than 20 different arcade system boards since they first started producing them in 1981. Sega, we still love you. Enjoy the podcast. Welcome to Arcade Attack. A retro gaming podcast for up to four players. Hey, hey, I'm Rob, and this is you're listening to uh, Arcade Attack, and with oh. me is Dylan. Hey, everybody! Adrian. <laughs> Hardly ho, <laughs> neighbor Riddles. And Keith. Ahoy, ahoy. <laughs> and today, after uh, spending what feels like lots of podcasts talking about uh, <laughs> bad pro- bad license adaptations, we're going to be talking about one of the good ones. Ooh. Hey, hey The Simpsons Arcade Game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love a bit of Simpsons Arcade Game, Robert. And I'm going to say, when I was a kid, spending uh, lots and lots and lots of time in arcades, this was my favourite game in the world. Like, the only game mm-hmm. that kind of came close to that, this was Street Fighter 2. The original Street Fighter 2. Yeah, yeah. And, man, I loved the Simpsons TV show I, when it first came out. I loved mm-hmm. this. And um, I'm guessing, did any of you play this in the arcades? Yes, yeah, I remember playing it on family holidays and stuff. Mm. Yeah. So easy to play. It's such that, a pick up and play sort of game, I'm isn't sure it? I'm sure Rob will go into that, but yeah, yes. that's one of mm. them. But it just looked so, it looked just like the cartoon, mm. you know? It is a great game. <clears throat> um, so, anyway, I thought like I'd go back like into kind of a history, that, like the back history of the game. Nice. Mm-hmm. And talk about like how it works, that kind of stuff. And then go into maybe mm-hmm. some of the uh, other Simpsons games that were kind of adapted for. Eight sixteen bit consoles would have been in like around the same time or in the aftermath yeah, of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyway, just to give some uh, backstory, Simpsons TV show released December nineteen eighty nine, first ever episode, the pilot episode, okay. and it was a sensation pretty much from the off. Mm. Like before this, the Simpsons were basically um, a short like kind of cartoon thing on the Tracy Ullman show. Mm-hmm. That's right. And it was promising enough that they rolled it into an actual TV show, and just like uh, Twin Peaks a few months later. Simpsons was pretty much a sensation from the off. Mm-hmm. Like, it seems weird considering how groundbreaking both of those shows were, but mm-hmm. actually, there was like a lot of attention right from the beginning, and Simpsons pretty much carried over throughout like the entire first season. Mm-hmm. Like, the kind of the most highly rated episode was, I think, the first episode of the second season in about 1990. Which one was that? <clears throat> that was Bart Gets an F. Oh, oh that's a, yeah, 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 that's quite a good episode. Isn't that's it? a good one. That's a good one. And uh, basically, like, as I say, kind of, Simpsons' first episode, 1989, the game goes into development February 1990, literally two months wow. afterwards. It was, like, that immediate thing. 
Wow. By this point, I'm guessing they're already kind of all those like pirate bar Simpsons t shirts were showing up everywhere. <laughs> yeah. It was like they were kind of probably <laughs> making the Butterfinger popcorn adverts. Like, oh, Butterfinger. Mm. See, that was common like in the 80s with all the film license games, like the ones Ocean used to make for the home computers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like once that they got the right, right, right for the film before the film came out and it happened. So, but for something like The Simpsons, for a, an animated <clears throat> TV program. Mm. Yeah, because obviously when The Simpsons came out, it was really novel to have an actual animated TV mm. program that wasn't just for children. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe The Flintstones had like kind of a more mainstream, had kind of a mainstreamish appeal, but that was kind of like twenty five years mm. in the past. Mm-hmm. And uh, so anyway, like the first uh, series of Simpsons goes on from December eighty nine to April nineteen ninety. It's only thirteen episodes, but uh, they kind of spread out. American scheduling is pretty weird. Like you'd have kind of yeah. some weeks where you didn't have stuff on. I don't know mm. why, because, you know, Fox, it was basically their biggest show ever. Mm. Like, they had Married with Children, I think, two or three years before, but, like, Simpsons, for, like, ratings, blew it out of the water. Yeah, but, Rob, does, didn't it take, like, six months to make each episode, mm. like, equivalent time or something? Well, I don't know if it was six months, mm. but it was basically pre-computers, um, yeah, it took a lot more time. Well, manpower, a lot of manpower yeah. for each episode, didn't it? And especially, I think you can kind of tell, like, the first, maybe, the prime era, what we think of the prime era of The Simpsons... The animation is a lot more exact than it becomes later on. You can kind of tell that it's very much computer kind of animated. Like you can look at the way, even the show. It seems weird to describe it like this, like this. But the way shows are directed in the kind of the first few years, it looks like everything's been really planned out in a really precise way. Mm. Things mm. you get weird perspectives. You get things like kind of in the background of shots. It's uh, is that a good precise. thing or bad thing? It's a great thing. Yeah. I think you don't really kind of get that thing, that kind of thing so much in, I guess, animated shows, but especially in, uh, I think Lady of Simpsons, we can all agree, has got a bit rote and uh, kind of by the numbers. Yeah. Stale.com. Yeah, by mm. the numbers is about right. Mm, pretty much. But anyway, like, uh, the arcade game finally gets released in March 91. This is uh, during season two, uh, about the same time as episodes like Bart's Dog's Dog Gets an F, where Santa's <laughs> little helper goes for training yeah. that's a good episode that is a good mm-hmm. one yeah. and old money the one where uh, Grandpa Simpson gets a girlfriend B and B. Uh, <laughs> yeah. B. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she dies and leaves him some money so basically uh, by the time this game comes out Simpsons already is moved on from kind of like the very basic kind of stuff mm-hmm. season one and uh, it's you know it's basically kind of moving near its prime near the start of its prime mm-hmm. so um, anyway Simpsons, like Fox needs to, or whoever owns kind of copyright The Simpsons, needs to have a game made for The Simpsons. It's going to be an arcade game. Who do you think made the arcade game? Who do you think like got the license for it? I can't remember. That's a good question. Um, What's well, a side scroller? So maybe don't Cap- look at the screen. Don't look at the screen. Maybe, maybe Capcom because they did a bit of side scroller and beat didn't they? Mm. I was thinking they did Final Fight, but it wasn't Capcom. Uh, uh, Konami. Correct. Keith nah, is correct. Nah, well yeah, but yeah, yeah. Keith, mm. can you set? Can you name the other licensed side scrolling beat em up that Konami had done two years before that was hugely popular and which shared some properties with the Simpsons arcade game? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Correct. Oh, wow. TMNT. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. One so, of the... really, two years before? I yeah. didn't realise the Turtles one was that old. Yeah, it's weird. Oh. Like, you kind of look them up now and you can see a kind of a significant difference in quality of graphics, sound, that kind of mm. stuff. But. Man, I remember playing the Turtles game in the arcades. It was really good. Yeah, that's a good game. Mm. Absolutely. And can you also name the main innovation of the Turtles game that was reproduced in the Simpsons arcade Ooh, game? I've got a suggestion. Is it maybe that you can work together as a team? Is there sort of like buddy powers where you can sort of join forces? You're close. Oh. The four player. Mm. Correct. Ah. Uh, Simpsons and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are like actual arcade cabinets. Each had four different mm. control mm-hmm. like joysticks and two button controllers. And if you wanted, you could choose up to four game, four players, and each plays simultaneously. It's a bit with tight. Some of those cabs are a bit tight. Big, You'd get a, a bit, bit cozy. Yeah. Yeah. A bit cozy. Yeah, yeah, close I mean, to your neighbour. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking a few weeks back about kind of retro arcades, and mm-hmm. I mentioned kind of being in Melbourne and being in uh, the Peckham one as well in Four mm-hmm. Quarters, and they both had some arcade games. And the weird thing about both games was, in both games the Lisa controls were screwed up. Oh. They didn't work. Man, everyone yeah. who had a go at Lisa just, just, just went too hard. They got they so angry, they go, this yeah. ain't working. <laughs> like, Lisa, stretch, girl, stretch. No. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
And uh, can anyone name any of the uh, licensed scrolling beat-offs Konami made after The Simpsons? Oh, I've got a suggestion. Is it Knights of the Round? Did they make that? No, I, that was Capcom, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was Capcom. No, License. The Aliens vs. Predator. Oh, Lice Capcom as well, wasn't it? There were two that came yes. out in the year following The Simpsons. Ooh. For 1991. That came out in 91. The other games came out in 91. Arcade ones? Yes. Sunset Riders? No. X-Men. X-Men. They didn't make Konami. Yes. X-Men. Adrian's correct. X-Men. Is that the one with the six player? You could make... Yeah, you could play with up to six players. (laughs) And... You want cosy? I show you cosy. (laughs) 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 And, like, the game is notable for not only having Nightcrawler, like, Mm. relatively Mm. kind of low-level X-Men character, but also Dazzler. He wasn't even like the cartoon. Bobby Dazzler. Do you like Dazzler? Bobby Dazzler. Dazzler's <laughs> great. Like, Dazzler's like this mutant who um, was like a pop singer. And I think still is a pop singer, but she can like turn sounds into light. Okay, mm. that's Or impressive. energy or something. I don't oh, know. Okay. But anyway, that's X-Men what? was one. Mm. Can anyone name the other? Uh, so it's like, uh, is it, what, is it a film or something? Or um, it was animated as well. Oh, come on. We, we, can, we can do this. We can do this. Uh, Toxic uh, Avengers. No, although if they'd, done a, from Mars. if they'd done a proper Toxic Avengers game, that would have been amazing. <laughs> they made some bad ones. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think it was also strong. Bucky O'Hare. <laughs> they did make a Bucky O'Hare game, did they? It's actually quite good. Oh, that's actually nice yeah, notable. The arcade, for, um, Buc- the arcade oh, Bucky O'Hare is good. Oh, it's right. an arcade game where you can actually kind of get guns and shoot people mm. at the same time. Sweet. But uh, no, it was, it was actually Asterix. Asterix. Oh, oh yeah, I mean Asterix yeah. game. And I've played the platformers, but I didn't know there was a. Mm. I've, I've seen it. It's good, isn't it? It's yeah, good. And basically, out. I'll kind of come back to Asterix in a little bit. Mm. But The Simpsons, for anyone who's never played the, you literally game, put an Asterix next to your comment, didn't you? Correct. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, but for people who aren't aware of it, the Simpsons arcade game, as we've been describing, is a scrolling beat em up. Mm-hmm. Which is not kind of maybe the thing you would automatically choose for the Simpsons, no, but it yeah. really, really works mm-hmm. in the context of the it's game. It's so crazy. Basically, the plot of the game is that uh, Smithers, for, so, like, for some reason, is robbing a bank. No, yeah. sorry, not a bank, a jeweler store. It's finally with, like, <laughs> and, um, and the Simpsons are walking by. And basically, as like they went out, they run straight into the Simpsons. And um, this massive diamond, literally this, almost the size of his hand, the Smithers is carrying, flies up in the air and lands in Maggie's mouth. Ooh. Like, you know, instead of a dummy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Instead of just taking it out, Smithers snatches Maggie <laughs> and runs off with her and you have to basically track him down. Mm. I don't know, maybe he's concerned about the welfare of a strange baby, even though he kind of knew this, who the Simpsons yeah. were. I don't know. Don't really go into detail on this. Well, he didn't want to like wrench it out of her mouth because then that could like, obviously hurt her gums and stuff. Well, so there could be teeth so, marks on the so diamond. He felt like kidnap was the only option. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's basically. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, basically, um, the plot of the game is you have to pursue Smithers through all these uh, Springfield levels, like theme levels. And uh, I've got to say, Keith spoke about the graphics a few minutes ago. The graphics are fantastic. They really are. Like, you know, they're not I, they're not perfect, they're not precise, but they're cartooning in the best possible mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, they actually kind of look like Matt Groening would have kind of supervised the actual graphics. So even kind of, you kind of go through the game and there are all these side characters, like, turn up, yeah. like, randomly in the background. You have all these, like, actual venues from, like, the show turn up yeah. in the background. You've got Noiseland Arcade, you've got... Um, Krusty Studio is one of the levels, like, even kind of things that weren't actually precisely in the TV show, were actually kind of reimagined, like, you have Krusty's TV studio, you have, like, Springfield Gorge, which I think they call Springfield (laughs) Butte for some reason. (laughs) But, um, yeah, like, every character from, like, uh, basically Martin Prince to Sideshow Bob are in the background at some point. Right. And you have like all these kind of generic goons you have to fight who basically look exactly like Matt Groening characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the animation's incredible, isn't it? It's fan- like the- man, the graphics are great. Like you kind of you're watching the game, they actually have a version of the opening kind of sequence. Yeah, and it's not precise, but it looks great. Like, genius, yeah. Yeah, it's close. Enough, it sucks you it? in, isn't it? When you when you see the arcade, you see this, you see the other intro, you, you think, oh, I've got especially play, when yeah. you saw it in 1991 as well, mm. you know, yeah. and compared it to the cartoon. Yeah, it's not spot on, but it's close enough. Yeah, and man, I love. I think all of us loved the first kind of like couple of seasons of The Simpsons. We were like eight, nine years old when it came out. Yeah, and... see, yeah, because I didn't see them until they came out on Channel Four, like mm. years after. Wow, well, really? I was a bit. Yeah. Well, no, I had Sky no, back then. Yeah, I, I, still... I was so excited. That was it, though, for mm. me. When we got Sky, it was The Simpsons. 
and WWF. Yeah. That was it, man. I had the South African version of Sky, it was Mnet. So Mnet. we got it as well, yeah. <laughs> no we put mode up there? No, not really. Like, um, Mnet, for that. I think, turned into some other kind of, like, big media company now. They're... Mm. Okay. Run by Murdoch Rupert. Mm, yeah. <laughs> like his, he's like his uh, alter ego. Yeah. But anyway, like the actual precise details of the game are fantastic. Like the first level boss is some obscure wrestler from like the background of some show Homer's watching, like in the first season. <laughs> okay. You have like the, you kind of go through this bar level where um, Princess is it Princess Jasmine, the belly yes. dancer. Yes. yes. Is dancing in the background, oh. and, if, and if Homer kind of, <laughs> and if you're playing as Homer as one of the characters, you can go up there, and if he gets into the stage, he'll start doing the Homer dance. Nice. Good, yeah. dance. It's Good dance. It's great, like, <laughs> like great detail in the best way. And Mac, it also has a lot of kind of stuff of Life and Hell. I don't know if any of you know Life and mm. Hell, but it was kind of the cartoon strip Mac Groening did before The Simpsons. Okay, lots yeah. of like rabbits, kind of, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, lots of uh, long-eared bunnies, rabbits, whatever you want to call them. And uh, they kind of show up in various points, like, in the game. Each, like, the intro to kind of each level, you have a TV screen. And you have, like, one of the bunnies acting out, like, the kind of theme from that level. Oh, right. And, like, you have this hands kind of turning the knobs. It just looks fantastic. And um, one of the kind of really interesting details is, you can tell this from, like, the first season of The Simpsons, because there's a couple of bits in the game where Marge gets electroshocked. <laughs> uh. And, um... Ever like whenever the, any of the characters get left shocked, you kind of see an X-ray of them, mm. and Marge's X-ray has bunny ears where her hair is. Ah. Ah. And apparently, Matt Groening's original idea would be he didn't know how long the series was going to last when he first kind of did it. It's going to be he was going to reveal Marge was a bunny or a rabbit at the end of the season. No way! <laughs> and they put yeah, that wow. series, yeah. yeah. But it was wow. never actually it got dropped in the show. That's Much like awesome detail. <laughs> can, yeah, and can yeah. anyone? Does anyone know what the other kind of big reveal was going to be in terms of who the Simpsons family actually were? I know. I know the answer to that. Oh, Go for it. Apparently Homer was also supposed to be Krusty the Clown. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Wow. That's why they look identical in terms of the actual kind of like facial structure. There was an episode where they did actually just have makeup, didn't he? And he, he acted like the it's clown. It's funny when he, I think he has to be Krusty. That's program. right. Homer yeah. joins Krusty's clown party. So party good. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It is very, very good. But anyway, like, there's up to four of you. You're kind of going... You're beating everyone up. Everyone has different weapons. Homer has his fists, mm -hmm. but uh, yep. he says her skip, skipping rope. Uh, yep. Bart has a skateboard. Mart has a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Not that's... It was a different time. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was a different yeah. time. And, um, but hey, you can also she wants to clean up the streets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> But as okay. yeah, as the Adrian said earlier, you can also kind of you have this thing where you can join up with characters to mm. do double attacks. Mm. If say uh, Bart and Lisa join up, they'll like run around the screen, like hitting everything. They're basically invincible. You uh, mm, yeah. yeah. So it's quite a few. If, you know, if you play two players, lots of different options, isn't it? it? Opens the game up quite a lot. Yeah, lots of combinations. Cooperation. We like that. Yeah. And uh, you the back of cooperation there. If you're Bart, mm. you can get on Homer's shoulders. You know, mm. it's what it's about, isn't it? It's about yeah, yeah and you can really kind of think between the characters. And there's a lot of interaction with background kind of stuff. Mm. You can like pick up stuff like street signs. You can pick up like bowling balls and mm. chuck them at people. There's a bit in the first level where there's actually a police car. If it, you have two characters, you need two characters for this. If you have two characters or more, you can lift the police car and throw it at someone. Wow, <laughs> awesome! <laughs> yeah, li so... Little touches make the a game special, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think so and like the level design in this game is fantastic like you kind of have the, all these kind of levels that are kind of authentic to the game and then my favourite thing of all of these levels is this dream level where basically one of the best things about the game is everything's really sequential yeah. you kind of like you kind of finish the first level and uh, you have a bonus level where you have to blow up balloons mm. and you use those balloons to travel upwards and like kind of mm. chase like Smithers in his hot air balloon and you kind of go to the next level there and I think once you kind of you finish the gorge level, you fall down a waterfall and you'll get knocked out, and then you go to, to Dreamland level, which is fantastic. Right. It's so brilliantly designed. Like everything's black and white wow. and grey, and uh, you basically have all these kind of characters from each, I guess, character's psyche. Like you have these little bark devils attacking you. You have like uh, I think bowling pins Good. attack you at one point, and. Um, it's great, and like the other weird, interesting thing about the level is at one point there's clearly in the background a pair of breasts <laughs> pointing up out of the ground, out of the clouds in this wow. dream level. And you just think, how do they get that fast? <laughs> <the senses?" laughs> 
Maybe it was one of the last levels they just didn't, you know, check them all out, maybe. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and then uh, eventually, basically, you uh, you end up in Burns' boardroom. You have to fight Smithers first. He kind of throws a lot of bombs at you. And then uh, you get past that and you face uh, Mr. Burns. He's in this, like, kind of a uh, robot suit. Ooh. And you, ba- he, you basically have to knock bits off this robot suit. And each time you do, he kind of gets a different power, tries to, like, attack you in a different way. Mm. Have you completed the game, Rob? You... Yeah, I completed the game in the arcade. I had to pump a lot of like wow. money into it. A lot of but, quarters, yeah. Man, it was well worth it. Yeah, that's great. But uh, yeah, <clears throat> basically like already interesting. But and this can be controversial, especially for Dylan. I think. Mm, okay. Here's a question: What game hugely ripped off the Simpsons uh, arcade game? You're not going to say. You're not going to say Streets Streets of Rage, are you? No. Streets of Rage 2. Oh, are you going to say that? Yeah, Streets of Rage came out about oh, yeah, six I months suppose, after... Yeah, Streets of Rage 2. Okay. After this, but Streets of Rage 2 came out um, almost two years afterwards, December 92. Interesting, yeah. And um, there's a lot of kind of common ground in this. There's a lift level where, like in The Simpsons, you can knock people off either side of it. Yep. There's um, a level with like where you're based in a bar and there are pool tables there. Yeah. You don't get to throw pool balls at people like you do in The Simpsons, but, you know... It's there. Um, you can mm. kind of do team moves. You join up with like someone. You can like if you're on Streets of Rage, do you can hold you can something throw, and kick people? That was in Streets of Rage, though. And Streets of Rage, mm. but Streets well, of Rage was 1990, <clears throat> was it? No, Streets of Rage was right. 91. Came out so uh, five yeah, so months after this. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and uh, the game <laughs> ends in a boardroom. Ah, yeah, that is true. Yeah. Got you there. Yeah, yeah true. Wowza. Yeah. Um, I think that's a valid point. It's a fair co- co- uh, Whether they actually ripped it off, who knows? But could be similar. coincidence, couldn't mm. it? Very, very, very similar. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure uh, the Street of Rage developers, <laughs> like developers of the main kind of uh, console scrolling beat em up, had no idea about what was happening in yeah. the arcade. <laughs> I'm sure that's correct, Rob. One of the most popular arcade games in the world. <laughs> Oh, Rob, you tease, aren't you? Know. <laughs> we can't say, but I'm just saying it's coincidence. So um, anyway, I love. As I was saying earlier, I loved the Simpsons arcade game. I absolutely loved it. And the, the thing I wanted to know, having like a Famicom, Sasha or whatever, was how can I get a version on my home system? Ooh. And I asked around, asked around, asked around. Every kind of gate place in the entire town that sold games, I asked. There was nothing. No, it doesn't exist, does it, on home consoles? No, it was never adapted for mm. eight or sixteen bit. They uh, did a version, I think, for a later, like. Um, Maybe think later PlayStation or Nintendo kind of oh, system, did but mm. one of those ones where like you kind of access it through kind of a shop, an online shop kind of thing. Oh right, like e- like Nintendo shop, eShop and stuff. Yeah, yeah, possibly. that kind of thing. Right, but no, it, it was never adapted for um, home console. That's a criminal shame, isn't it? It but is. Could you do four players on the Mega Drive? Is that possible? Would that push it too hard? Well, uh, yeah, I think you could you have hmm. four players, but not with this kind of thing. It was yeah. too too much going on screen. The two player maybe would have slowed down. Yeah, two player definitely. It doesn't make a lot of sense though when you know we got the turtles mm-hmm. beat em ups yeah. on the Mega Drive. Well, this, so. well, I think part of the reason could be um, the thing I kept hearing when I kept asking around was there is a, there is a game for the Nairs. There is a Simpsons game for the Nairs. Mm, yeah, there is. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, like for some reason, Simpsons <laughs> wasn't licensed to Konami for uh, home consoles. Oh, right. Can anyone guess uh, who got the Simpsons license yeah. for home console? Uh, it was Flying Edge, wasn't it? A claim. <laughs> yeah. It was a claim, yes. Flying Edge did the Sega games oh, and Ocean yeah. did the Amiga games. <laughs> you made Dylan cry. <laughs> Why did you have that, Rob? Hey, I don't care how much pain Dylan's in right now. There's nothing, <laughs> nothing compared to what I felt at the time. When I had to play Bard vs. the Space Mutants. <laughs> oh, no, that game's alright. Yeah, but compared to the arcade yeah, game, it's nothing. Yeah. It is actually... The Bart vs. Space Mutants came out a month before the arcade game. Oh, did it? It came out first. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, and my suspicion is, and I have not, I don't know how to back this up, but my suspicion is, the reason Bart vs. Space Mutants came out first was it was based on an existing game that um, was lazy adapted to include The Simpsons in. Ooh, controversial comment. I mean, this, I'm not saying I, as I say, I have no evidence for this. This is my suspicion. Uh. And uh, basically, like, the main plot of Bart vs. Space Mutants is, it's ludicrous. Basically, aliens, space mutants, are invading the Earth, and the only person who knows about it is Bart, because he happens to be out 
whatever when they land, the spaceship lands, which no one else sees. Yeah. And he has like he has glasses like in They Live, where oh. he can see mm. which humans are actually space mutants. Of course. We love that film. And when he jumps in their heads, um, they revert to their space mutant form and fly off, whatever. But nice. basically, the space mutants want to, want to take over the Earth. And if you're the space mutants, how would you? If you're space mutants, how would you try and take over the Earth? Um, a mind ray. Mind ray. Mind like uh, you. You would. Get in, try, well, no, you'd, you'd kidnap the two potential candidates for the presidency, wouldn't you? And replace them. <laughs> and replace them. Yeah. And there are only two choices. Absolutely. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Don't, don't, was it oh. What are you going to do? Choose a third party <laughs> candidate? That's what I would do. Crang and... Abortions for some, miniature American <laughs> flags for others. <laughs> what, what's that line as well? Don't blame me, I voted for code, code or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Keith, any ideas? If you were at Space Mutants, how would you take over the Earth? Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what they do in the game now, so I look really clever. <laughs> Something to do with purple objects. Oh, well, that's just the first level, isn't it? Keith, that makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> no, how could you come up with such an incredibly <laughs> stupid suggestion? <laughs> Yeah, Keith, how? So of course, Keith there. has obviously played the game and therefore his suggestion is exactly the same as the actual... <laughs> no, it's almost exactly the same. Basically, these aliens who have the technology to fly across a galaxy or multiple galaxies, who knows, to uh, to find it and have the planet to take over have no actual means to take over the planet when they get here. <laughs> they have to build a machine and they need purple objects mm. to build the machine. <laughs> I don't know. In the first level. So basically... <laughs> Bart has to spray everything that's purple into red yeah. in the first level. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Then, yeah. And, the, and then the other levels, they have to, they, since there are no purple things left on Earth, apparently, they have to find things like hats or balloons. Wow. <laughs> and so Bart has to destroy those in other levels. <laughs> destroy those, yeah. And, um, <sighs> and, you know, like, there are other kind of main characters since this family who make what I can only imagine to be contractually obligated appearances <laughs> in, in the game well I, I yeah, found the game really tough personally I just I, I kept dying the first level was hard for me they're all kind of pretty difficult I mean also, but I don't know to me the whole thing just seems so low grade like I played the NES version I kind of checked out the Mega Drive version in kind of as research for this the Mega Drive version basically looks like a NES game with brighter colours NES game doesn't look that much better than the C64 game <laughs> <laughs> the controls are awful. There isn't a jump button. Mm. You have there to press two button. buttons to jump. Yeah, that is... The that hell? Is this is also... Especially on the Mega Drive. The Mega Drive got three buttons. They look, the graphics are horrendous, aren't they? I mean... And listeners, this... The listeners can't see this right now, but we're, <laughs> looking, we're looking at the Mega Drive version yeah. and it's awful. And it's... the sound is also a, a terrible version of the actual Simpsons theme. And it... also, they're like... They're literally space mutants jumping around and playing view and no one cares. No. Like, w- what's going on? Yeah, and you just dial Oh, look, purple stuff. You just dial the time. <laughs> you do just dial the purple time. Purple stuff. Like, oh. yeah, the sound is horrendous. I mean, the actual... The music for the arcade game is actually really good. And mm-hmm. they got the actual voice cast, the four main actors, to provide voices. Yeah. Well, see, but see arcade games, when we were young, mm. were the pinnacle. Mm. Yeah, they were the mm. pinnacle of games. Mm. You had teams and teams. You had specially built boards that could you know look more powerful than home consoles that's what that's what we had back like, in those days in terms of gaming you've not lived until you've heard Yerdy Smith go embrace nothingness <laughs> 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 but yeah you had Space Mutants and Space Mutants was a very successful game mm-hmm. like I say believe it or not but it was some people like me who were sucked with the license we were so yeah. desperate so desperate <laughs> any kind of Simpsons game yeah yeah I didn't buy it obviously but like uh, I definitely I paid to rent it out yeah I did mm. yeah. and um to, like now the Space Mutants game was actually uh, it was made by a couple of guys called Gary Kitchen and David Crane Gary Kitchen and David Crane Whoa. both on Arcade Attack <laughs> interesting you can read interviews with both of those legends and on Arcade Attack Gary Kitchen does talk about his work on this game actually I was going to ask if uh, anyone actually knew any of the other games they did but there's no point asking now because the information's all there it's all there, <laughs> it's all there. <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> but for like the purposes of this podcast what games did they also do uh, obviously David Crane is massive for Pitfall yeah that's his big one like that's his big one oh. Gary Kitchen did um, scratch some head uh, Keystone <clears throat> Capers didn't he that's right um, I believe he did 
Uh, I can't forget all the other ones. And he did them. Battle Tank. Battle Tank. Oh, yeah, well, and uh, the two collaborated yeah. on a, the boy on Boyner's Blob. That's right. Boyner's Blob, which is quite well respected, isn't it? It's about Boyner's mm-hmm. Blob. And uh, also, uh, what other game was David Crane involved with later on, apart from David Crane's amazing tennis? Yes, which has also been reviewed on the site. This, yes. is, like, <laughs> this is the bonus, this is bonus <laughs> level for our listeners. Yes, but um, what game did he work on after that? And it's oh. a game, it's a Keith favourite, I think. Oh, hello. Yeah. I, I should know this. should know it. A game Keith has played recently. Ooh. Oh, hello. Uh, David Crane. Not... David Crane. No, don't think... I think it was a game you played recently. Uh, how recently? Oh! Night Trap. Correct. Night Trap. Oh, of course. David ah, Crane worked t- on Night Trap. We talk about Night Trap in the interview as well. Oh, and Rob ah. Fuller. Rob Fuller. Rob Fuller. Also yeah, on Arcade Attack. Arcade Attack. <laughs> we just, there's no one we don't have on Arcade Attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they Place cl- to be. And they collaborated on um, a quickly, and I'm going to guess it was quickly because it was released the same year, sequel to Bart vs. Space Meet. It's called Bart vs. The World. Oh yeah, Bart vs. Yeah. The World. Yeah. And the plot for Bart versus the world is basically correct me if I'm wrong this is get on a TV show where they basically have to go on a scavenger hunt hmm. but Mr. Burns wants all the objects as well for some reason so Smithers has to steal them all well that's Burnsy isn't it he, <laughs> yeah that's Burnsy he for wants, you. he wants it all yeah I mean like these are not great adaptations but then again they're something <laughs> They are something. They are, they are, they are something. They are a thing. They are, they are a, a thing. product. They were content. They were a product. <laughs> they were oh, licensed content. That's content. what they call it now. Yes. It's content. It's content. But yeah. that is this basically is what... Content. This is content. That is what these games deserve to be called. Content. <laughs> oh, that's a bit harsh. Is it? A tad, I think. You're nothing but content to me, Bart vs. <laughs> Space Mutants. I, I, maybe I can chuckle it with Kerbal, actually, because... Yes. In 1996, I was into my PC, obviously, um... And I actually bought... It's not really a game, actually. It's called The Simpsons Cartoon Studio. You guys heard about this? No. And it's a, it's a bit of software. It's not really a game as such, but you can actually make your own Simpsons cartoons. I didn't know that. Oh, no. Honestly. And I actually spent hours... You could pick your characters, put them in the frames. They're like one-scene frames, really. You can't move locations, really. But you can control where your characters move. They can talk to each other. You know, it was quite basic, really. But back in those days, I always had a dream of being a cartoonist. So, so it was like, like Worker nice. versus Parasite. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Orange versus oh, what was the one that used to write? Orange and Heart Man. Orange and Heart Back Man. Back in the day, but that, that doesn't mean anything to our listeners. Oh, but they're going to be like, oh, they're like googling Orange and Heart Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this was this obviously wasn't the end of uh, the Simpsons on consoles. No, like, of course it was not. The following year, ooh, ooh. Krusty's Funhouse mm-hmm. came out. Yeah, and, um, super, decent super game. Funhouse. Act- is it Krusty's Super yeah. Funhouse? I think it was Super Funhouse and 16-bit. Yeah. I'm not... One of Flying Edge's yes. least worst games. Least worst? Least, least worst. worstest. Least worstest. <laughs> Explain how. Um, Explain well, compared to other else. Flying Edge... <laughs> it's Krusty and you're just bouncing around, basically. It's a platformer where you're Krusty. Uh, well, no, it's kind of Lemmings-ish. Lemmings-ish. Because uh, Krusty's Super Funhouse has a rat infestation. Oh, that's it, yeah. And really you have to dive the rats off. Yeah, that's it, yeah. And, yeah, it's sort of set, yeah. Head, yeah. 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 So it's like the opposite of Lemmings, the goal is to kill all of them. Uh, yes, it's like reverse Lemmings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. Well. Adrian, like you played it. I haven't this played game. Super Funhouse, oh, okay. truthfully, no, but I've heard it's good though, it's good. It's it was worst. possible. It's like, at least it was. And uh, yeah, the um, same year, Bart's Nightmare came out on the snares. Bart's Nightmare is... Oh, I never played that. It's pretty bad. Ooh. Basically, like, uh, the plot is Bart is doing his homework, and he falls asleep, like Bart, in Bart gets an F. And then he goes into Dreamland, where um, he has to play many mini-games. Oh, oh doesn't he have to collect the, his, the dream bits of his homework in order to make sure he... Yes. Passes the next <laughs> yes. Because obviously that's worked. It's worked for me in the past, you know. Yeah, um, a plot that makes at least as much sense as Bart vs. the Space Humans. And is it is this one where one of the levels is Bart as Godzilla? Yes. Yeah. Ooh, that sounds pretty cool. Oh, I'm, I always get that mixed up with Virtual Bart that came out, but I think that is... No, that is... I think virtual that's Bart's Bart Nightmare. Is yeah, Virtual's is Bart's Bart, Nightmare. Bart came out two years later. It's mm. like, Bart goes to a virtual reality simulator and... It's like a... Plays lots of minigames yeah. again. Terrible minigames. They're no. or both awful It's really games. rubbish. Yeah, there are... Uh, it, it boggles the mind how it's too successful... 
and it claims like property can have so many bad games attached to it. Mm. It's just, you know, my acclaim bashing knows no bounds. I think well, I'll stop today. <laughs> You're getting too old. You're getting, getting too old. old. But surely Simpsons games got better, Rob. Simpsons hit and run. Uh, Wait, hello. before we get to those ones, Hello. there's one lesser known. Ooh. Simpsons Say games. what? Lesser, lesser, lesser known. It's a Game Boy game. Oh. Is it Itchy and Scratchy? Itchy and Scratchy and Miniature Golf Madness. What? Wow. <laughs> Why have I not heard of this game? Well, I don't know. Why not? <laughs> Tell us more about the game. Yeah, you play yeah. as... Itchy. Oh, scra- itchy oh, slash... Itchy. Itchy. Scratchy itchy. is the cat. Scratchy itchy is the, the mouse. You play as Scratchy. Oh. And it's kind of taking revenge. But you have to play your way through the level and it's like a miniature golf course. That sounds pretty cool. And you have well, to you... hit the ball and it, there's things like things you have to set so it goes up the ramp and then mm-hmm. it, 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 it mm. sets the bomb off to blow up the team. Okay. But so it's literally like, quite fun. Literally like the episode of Simpsons where Bart is playing miniature golf against Todd Flanders. That's right. Yeah. 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 Getting yeah. scratchy miniature golf madness. I'm on Look it. Look it up. I'm is the end boss <laughs> Poochie or is that pre Poochie? <laughs> That's 1994, it. so no. Pre-poochie. Is it pre-poochie? Yeah. We like oh. post-poochie, personally. Which is pre-poochie before? Pretty sure poochie was around 90, season 8, 95, 96. Oh, wow. Get all yeah, the keys. Google Check that. out. Google, Google that stuff. Google Someone. Google Do you reckon there should be a spin-off Simpsons game? Just you control poochie. Can you imagine? <laughs> Keith has just broken Google <laughs> by Googling poochie. <laughs> Really? Yeah, Poochie yeah. spin-off game. You have to get back to your home planet. <laughs> yeah, you've got to get back to your home planet. Oh, you're so going to his home planet. So literally, <laughs> like, the only game is to die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you're a, a surfing hip-hop kind of cool dude, aren't you? So yeah. it's all right. Hmm. Make him a little bit 5% more raster. <laughs> Rust fine by about 5%. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Make the name something like Poochie, but better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd play it. I'd play it. But uh, yeah, anyway, to, to summarise, the Simpsons Arcade game is great. Like, you kind of wish that they'd kind of made an update later on with all the other kind of later plot lines and stuff in the background. Oh, yeah. Other characters in the background. Disco Stew. Ah. Yeah. And the thing like, Sideshow Bob couldn't have been a boss. Yeah. You know, there's kind of... The, it feels like the Simpsons universe got so much richer after that. But at the other end, kind of at the other end, there's something about the Simpsons Arcade game I think which is really interesting is that it kind of takes things basic themes from the game and re-imag- and actually imagines them into new things. Mm. Like the TV studio, like the Gorge, like the boardroom. Like- yeah, they've not copied it um, mm. cartoon by cartoon. They've sort of interpreted it and that's why people can enjoy it as a Simpsons thing by yeah. itself. They kind of built their kind of their own kind of Mac Grading centric universe and like a lot yeah. of even like the kind of generic enemies look like Mac Grading characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like they it's like they built their own universe based on the Simpsons game. And mm-hmm. you kinda of look at this and you can see maybe the Simpsons could have gone in an alternate alternate, you know, direction which might not might not have been as good, but would have actually been really interesting as well. I think there's scope to bring it back. Punchy back. was um season eight. Ouchie. Yeah. I oh, told you. Well, he was late. Yeah. Only seven that late. Wow, wow interesting. He was, he was well late, but yeah. thank you. And then Google has restored mm. itself. It's now working Yeah, again. I fixed Google. Don't panic. Fixed Google. Google. Yeah. <laughs> but I think there is scope to bring back a, a Simpsons arcade game. So if a small indie developer got the rights to it and then imagined it, oh, yeah. stuck it on mm. Steam as a multiplayer, grabbed three guys online <laughs> to play with, Sonic Mania style, are you thinking? Sonic like add Mania new style. stuff in? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not do that? Someone do it. Yes. Or they can make like a monorail game, like a Transport Tycoon monorail. game. Yeah, take monorail. a monorail. 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 <laughs> monorail. <laughs> It'd just be like Railway Tycoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Monorail Tycoon. You have to make the worst monorail ever to succeed. <laughs> and then flee out of town. Yeah. The ring came off my cutting can. <laughs> take my... Pen knife. My good man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think that's a, probably a good place to end it. Unless anyone has any other Simpsons game related uh, things they want to come in with. Um, yeah, we got, well, well, we're going to mention later, well, hit and later run. games. Hit and run, run man. Good. Road Rage yeah. is pretty fun as well, which is basically is Crazy fun. Taxi, but with Simpsons characters. I feel like they're awesome games, but based on the shells of previous, like, other games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, you know. Yeah, because Hit and Run is like GTA Homer, isn't it? Yeah, yeah GTA Homer. Yeah. And as, you know, the arcade game was a Simpsons TMNT. <laughs> True. It's just, you know, Simpsons, Simpsons is a skin that goes on everything. Mm. Yeah, even a, even a mini golf game. Yeah, <laughs> a mini golf game. Mm. Get well, on it, mini golf madness. I have one more question to actually close this. Mm. 
was going to say about the Asterix game, the things that oh, yeah. the, thing the Asterix game and the Simpsons game have in common is that the detail is so good. You actually, like, all the characters look like the characters, they act like the characters. That's it. In the Asterix game, like, uh, they actually kind of wind up their fists and punch people, <laughs> like... Like, like the comic it, books, yeah. yeah like the yeah. comic books, they'll grab them and slap people around the face. Well, that's, what like, that's, that's the thing it got so right, was the personality. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah. It's such an old game, really, 1991. Mm-hmm. But they managed to get inject so much of the personality of the show yeah, into the, boy- the characters. Yeah, the if voice- they would have been able to do... Were they, were they, well, obviously they wouldn't have been able to do that on an mm-hmm. 8-bit machine or a 16-bit machine. They needed a, an arcade... Mm. Board. The Jaguar. Mm. Should have been a Jaguar game. Yeah, like Should have the, been a Jaguar game. <laughs> the graphics and sound, like, because the characters are constantly talking in the game, and it's great. Like, for once, the characters are constantly talking, and it's not an annoyance. It's actually great. I mean, like the opposite of Bubsy. Yes, the opposite, <laughs> literally the opposite of Bubsy. Yeah. Or, no, we love you, uh, Bubsy. We love you. Or, um, according to some people, no, we don't. Ocarina of Time. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah, the question I was going to ask was, uh, Konami kind of stopped, seemed to start kind of making these games after the X-Men. Yeah. And mm. Are there any other properties you would like to see Konami do? In that kind of style? style. Yeah. Mm. A kind of scrolling you beat em up kind of sprawling style? Anything in the last 25 years since Ooh. then? Oh, that's a good question. You put one in the spot, like, Did man. they do the Captain America and the Avengers scrolling no, game? No, that was Data <sighs> East. Okay, cool. Data, you have to say it like Presented that as well. by Data East. <laughs> so, yeah, is there anything else they could have adapted? Bike Mice from Mars? Surely. Yeah. I suppose, yeah, if you think about anything animated, mm-hmm. they could have done yeah. South Park, Scrolling Beat Em Up. Oh, come on. How the, good would that the be? South Park, like, I mean, game. Because they've made rubbish games. Stick, like. So far. Oh, come on. The South Park stick game is fantastic. I've What's not the, played the Stick of Truth. I'm truth. looking forward to the it's fractured great. butthole. Butthole. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone is looking forward to a fractured <laughs> Yeah, get the hemorrhoid cream. No, really. I, I've actually, yeah, I know I've pre-ordered the fractured but, but, but you... the fractured but whole. <laughs> nice. So I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, up to now, not including the Stick of Truth because I haven't played it, pretty much all the South Park games are terrible. Yeah. But yeah, it would be pretty easy to turn that into one of these kind of games. Mm. Uh, Futurama could work, possibly. Futurama, yeah. Mm. yeah. Playing Dr. Zoidberg. Yeah, <laughs> he'll be a background character at best. It's ages what? since I heard you do that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, <it's good. laughs> nah, yeah, the, um, yeah. Future is my shout. I can't think of anything. The first thing that sprung to my mind was the Britas Empire. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, you could be Gordon Britas. I've heard rumours that's coming back. <laughs> You've yeah, narrowed. Oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> It, no, it can't come back because the last episode of the British Empire. I know we're getting to a massive oh, tangent dear. here. We are, last and a lot of people are going, What? <laughs> what are they talking the about? The last episode of the British Empire, which, by the way, was terrible. Uh, I involves, love it. I have it on DVD. Involves. Um, you made a DVD. Him. <laughs> I used to love it, to be honest. It, it turns out it was all a dream. Oh. Yeah. The whole entire oh, team yeah. of the British Empire was a dream. He was on a train, like on his way to a job interview, and all the characters are just people on the train. All oh, right. Yeah. That was a bit of a disappointing mm. way to end and a, a program that I liked. But it'd be quite funny because you could just like go around the leisure centre as Gordon Britt <laughs> with, you know, various <laughs> implements, smacking people and, and punters. Oh, How do you have that as a chest not Red Dwarf? Red Dwarf is like the best game off. ever. Yeah, that yeah could Red be really Dwarf. Cool. Uh, okay, so I suppose you could have, you've got multiple character, better, better characters. Lots of villains as well. Lots of villains. And you have flying levels. You could have flying yeah. levels and things. Yeah. Okay, Red Dwarf could work a bit better than the Brit Ass. Everyone's Googling scrolling beat em up. Everyone's Googling that right now. Brit Ass, B R I T T A S. Chris Barry, we like you. We like you. We love you. We like you. And then I go and spoil it all. I say it's something stupid like I, I like, like you. <laughs> <laughs> Peep show reference. And on that note, thanks for listening to today's podcast. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to get in touch regarding this week's episode or anything else, you can tweet us at Arcade Attack UK, at Keith Barlow82, and at Arcade underscore Adriano. We're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash Arcade Attack UK. Please check out our website at arcadeattack.co.uk for lots of retro gaming goodness, interviews, reviews, features, top tens, etc. And you can also find all our previous podcasts there. Our podcasts are available to stream from the website and from SoundCloud and are available to download for free from Stitcher, Podbean and iTunes, where you can also leave us a review and a rating, which we would really, really appreciate. So until next time, take care and we'll speak to you soon.